what we're doing are building homes for the community, providing places and spaces for businesses, and creating recreational opportunities for the community. To date, we've built more than 350 single-family homes, a multi-family complex, mixed-use development with 24 townhomes and 10 commercial lease spaces. We're currently in the process of renovating the historic Deluxe Theater, and we've added gateway monuments and entries to the Fifth Ward, as well as new parks. The Deluxe Theater has a really interesting history as far as the life cycle of it. So the fact that it's being renovated now into another performing arts venue um, <clears throat> fits within its life cycle, but it's, it's um, the Deluxe Theater was built in 1941 and um, it was uh, a movie theater. It was one of four that was in the neighborhood um, at the time of segregation, it was um, only it was one of the only choices for entertainment that community members had. And in 1969, after desegregation, it closed its doors because um, the, you know, the community had a choice of places to go after that. So um, they weren't confined to just what was here within the Fifth Ward. In 1969, the theater closed its doors as a movie theater and it sat empty for three years. In 1971, the Manils, and this is before the Manil collection was built, before the museum was around, they had the foundation, the Manil Foundation. They rented the space in 1971 and renovated it for um, a visual arts place. So they turned the movie theater, they took out the main seating um, and uh, completely whitewashed all the walls. They, they put in displays, they basically turned it into an art gallery. But they put a wall up where the balcony was overlooking the main seating, right? They put a wall up so people in the neighborhood could still come and watch movies. They would show movies for kids on one side of the wall, which would, used to be the balcony, and then the rest of the space was an art space. So in 1971, they hosted what was termed the Deluxe Show, and it was the very first uh, racially integrated modern art show in the country and there were um, Nikki Leland was a part of making that happen who was a huge um, activist and politician from the area um, several famous modern artists uh, were a part of that show and it ran for I think three months and over 4,000 people came to it here in the fifth ward you know which at the time in the 70s the fifth ward was known as the bloody fifth because it was um, very much full of crime. You know, once segregation um, was abolished, uh, people left the community. So there were a lot of buildings that were left um, abandoned, a lot of businesses closed. And so um, what happened was a lot of crime moved in. To see um, people rebranding themselves uh, and not seeing themselves as the bloody fifth but seeing themselves as a place where people can live and family can be celebrated and a sense of, of security and safety within your community, within your home. Uh, those are all moments of, uh, uh, of celebration, not just for myself, but for, for the entire community. In 1971, the Deluxe Show happened. It was a huge success. So in 72 and 73, the Manils and the Manil Foundation hosted uh, two more art shows. The last one was a Tribal Arts of Africa exhibit. And um, in 1973, the theater was closed and it was sitting empty ever since. And so basically for 35 years, it had been sitting empty. Everything had been taken out of it. The marquee was missing, all the seats were gone. Um, <laughs> I don't know how long ago, I mean, when I came in in 2008, the ceiling had fallen in probably decades before. So for literally decades, this building was just being rained in and people would break into it and there was lots of vandalism and there was, you know, walls that were torn down and holes and, you know, it was just very, it was very run down and um, they bought it to, pr to protect it because the city wanted to tear the building down. It's a historic site, it has to be protected, you know, I mean, there was so much that happened around this building, and literally for the past 15 years I've been working to get this building um, preserved and restored as an art facility here in the neighborhood. It, it 
it wasn't so much as uh, making a choice as it was of, of survival and an understanding uh, that wherever uh, wherever darkness is, light has an obligation to shine. And so we embarked to move that from the theoretical to the experiential. When I was working on the deluxe as an intern, um, almost daily someone would walk by and see me outside working. It was the place where they met their wife. It was the place they got their first kiss. It was a place that their friends and, you know, they used to go with their friends on the weekends and they'd watch, you know, four four different shows. You know, you get a cartoon and, and a series and then two movies and the theater would close at like 10 o'clock and then you'd go next door to the juke joint and listen to music until two in the morning and then you go across the street to the all night diner and you'd have breakfast and you'd get home at like 6 a.m. These stories, as I started hearing them, it just made me realize like the deluxe theater is a huge part of this community with, with the changing times in the 70s and 80s that, that got forgotten and what started to be remembered was you know, the bloody fit and oh, how dangerous that it is. That's not the Fifth Ward anymore, you know. Um, it was never really the Fifth Ward, unfortunately, but um, it's not the Fifth Ward anymore. So it's it's great to see what the Fifth Ward CRC is doing, which is why I love this organization so much. They're rebuilding the homes that have been sitting abandoned and boarded up for a very long time. They're clearing lots of uh, old commercial buildings and rebuilding new ones. They're creating opportunities for people in the neighborhood to have, you know, first-time home buyers and um, uh, first-time business owners and, and also trying to bring the art back into the community. So the Deluxe Theater, which um, will hopefully have finished uh, at the end of March, um, we're looking at an opening, a grand opening, probably sometime this fall. Um, that's just the first in what we hope will be a lot of change happening for the art community here in Lyons Avenue. The hope is to bring back Lyons Avenue as the center for arts and culture in Houston like it used to be.